And so we get into what I think everyone really thinks about when they think about HEMA, and certainly the main focus, the main event of Long Point would be the long sword fighting. Uh, and so there's actually two tournaments that take place. Actually, there are four. Oh, four. There's four divisions of long sword that happens. There is the rookie division, the yeah. staff invitational division, mm -hmm. the women's division, yep. and then the open steel. Yes. So. Yes, there are those four, but when it came down to what was happening in the finals and the primary tournaments, there were two. It was the women's and the open steel. Women's steel. and the open steel. Um, both were, were very impressive to watch. Uh, we were cheering on some of our uh, Georgia uh, teammates, as it were. They're not in our club. They're in one of the other clubs. But we, in the state of Georgia, have banded together to kind of create Team Georgia, uh, which we were cheering on many people in the long short tournaments mm -hmm. uh, from Team Georgia. Um, but... Uh, watching, I, I thought it was very interesting to watch the uh, the women's longsword. Uh, you saw a lot of really good technique, um, very textbook, a lot more focused on doing exactly what a source would say. Um, so it was much clearer when someone was doing something like a zorkow, or uh, they were you know cutting with uh, a zornhow and then went into a long work. Right? Uh, they it was a lot more apparent. Um, and, and I think that uh, the ladies were all incredibly skilled, um, especially when we got to uh, the final bouts. Um, there were, they really started to go at it, I'll tell you. Um, uh, a lot of pommel strikes were coming out of the women's longsword tournament. Uh, you so get up close enough, <clears throat> that's the only move they, they would start grappling and start uh, hitting each other with a pommel. Um, some aggression getting, being gotten out there, I, I suppose. Uh, the biggest thing that I noticed as a difference between the women versus what was going on in the open still is it seemed like the women were a little bit slower. Uh, yeah, may, maybe a bit. And they, and were, they were more technical, but they seemed to be just a little bit slower. Yeah, and, and I think that, uh, I think as it, as it progressed, it that became less apparent. They, yeah. were, they were certainly much more comfortable. Uh, the people, it was obvious uh, as you worked through that tournament who had been doing it for a while because they were much more aggressive, much less they just, timid. They were just much more confident. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that was true even in the open steel. You would see people who would go in and they would be very, very defensive versus the person who just kind of walks in and just goes for it. Yeah. Um, and then, then the, the, the open steel longsword uh, was a lot harder to follow in terms of what moves were, be were being used. Um, I think that there was a high number of open doubles, which an open double is where both people strike at each other, uh, getting one. the getting the hit, getting the kill, but leaving themselves exposed to get hit. So if I hit someone in the side and they hit me in the head, that's an open double. There were an incredible high number of those. Um, and these were all penalized too, because yep. obviously not defending yourself is not good technique. And we did see we saw one bout that was actually um, fully penalized, i.e. The two individuals did open double so many times that then they, on the third open double, uh, both of them failed. Failed, yeah, they disqualified. They failed to advance. Um, so it, I, it, it it really it it really gets down to the core of you know there is no such thing as a win win in longsword. If you're if you're getting the point or you're getting the kill, but the other person's killing you in the process, you've actually lost. And and the tournament is designed to reinforce that concept. I thought that that was really cool. The fact that the rules are very specifically designed to to encourage and reward good technique. And when you do something that is bad technique, like not defending yourself and getting hit because of it, you are very much penalized for that. You're very much discouraged from doing that. Because um, I know when we very first started, particularly when we were watching the rookie bouts at the very beginning of, of the whole weekend, but even in the sort of the beginning of the open steel division, you would sometimes see people just kind of flailing. And I don't know if people maybe just panicked and flailed or if they were just less experienced, but you did, you saw those people got weeded out of the tournament very quickly. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's kind of this odd, odd thing. And, and we were actually, I was having a conversation with a couple of people, just a sidebar conversation. We were talking about the difference between a beginner and intermediate and an advanced uh, person who, who has skill at longsword. And basically <clears throat> the, the beginner, the brand new person is actually much more likely to flail around and not have clean strikes and hit with the flat and, and not know what to do past the very first initial bind. Um, but they're also 
they actually might have the ability to beat an intermediate person because the intermediate person will have learned well enough how to control the sword and what to do, but they're not advanced enough to execute on that properly every time. And so while they're trying to figure out how to do a proper Zverkow in order to, you know, uh, intercept and defend against uh, a Zornhow, um, they're doing that slowly or not nearly like they should be, and they're expecting that Zornhow to come a certain way, and that newbie just kind of goes, uh, 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 and swings around and smacks him in the side and gets the point. Yeah. Um, so we're having this conversation about how it's funny, you, you advance in HEMA, and you're getting beat by the new people, and you have to keep advancing, you have to get to that point where now you don't get beat by the new people anymore. That's, that's actually like one way to tell that you've actually reached that advanced state is when the person who comes in there flailing fails to get a point on you mm. uh, in something like a tournament. Um, but yeah, very quickly uh, in the actual open steel was that weeded out, and then you begin to get into these really incredible bouts. Um, I'll have to go search through it. I, I think I have video of it. If I do, it'll probably play on the screen right now. Um, but Jake Norwood uh, went up against, and I can't remember his first name, but his last name was Wiggins. Our and and well, it was, oh, it was Wiggins. It was he he okay. no, but he uh, he got two controlled thrusts back to back, and essentially Straight won the bout. Ahead. I mean, yeah. Uh, and a controlled uh, a controlled thrust is going to get you the most points because you're controlling the person's blade. And you're getting, uh, you know, the kill, and it's it's kind of the pinnacle of showing that you have skill with longsword if you can successfully do that. And just in um, case anyone watching this, like me, didn't know who Jake was, uh, he's pretty much the guy who's good at everything. <laughs> he was the guy who walked away with the most medals at the end when they were rewarding all of them, uh, because he's incredibly good. And so watching him get completely annihilated in two exchanges, and that's it. He's done. He's out. That was pretty impressive too. And 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 he made a he made a really good statement uh, in the awards dinner um, that you know somebody asked him like well, how do you feel that you've got these young people coming in and so easily beating you Jake kind of jiving at him he was like it's awesome we're getting to that point now where where you know we are now getting into like generational aspects of of historical European martial arts. We're actually beginning to recreate the way it would have been taught back in the day, and now there's people who are going to be more skilled, and it's gonna keep building, and people are gonna get more and more skilled. I, I actually feel incredibly excited because I know that I will never be that good, but but I will see people who get better and better and better mm -hmm. as, as this, as a martial art, as a sport, as a community event, as whatever you want to call it, as it continues to grow, we're going to see better and better athletes. Not that they're going to be like these well-paid football star type people, but they're pe people who are skilled, people who have the, the, the innate understanding of their body biomechanically just works for this, and they become just the best swordsmen, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be the people who go beat the Axel Petersons out there, the people who we have as the big names today, and pretty soon, you know, there'll be these young whippersnappers, as it were, who are going to come in and going to show them all up, and it's going to just be incredible to see. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, the, the long sword overall, the tournament overall, um, was incredibly interesting to watch throughout, from the very beginning all the way through the finals, because the final bout was good, but honestly, there were some incredible matches that happened. Uh, in between the beginning and the final, mm -hmm. uh, especially as you got down to kind of those semi-final matches. Uh, I think those were actually some of the more interesting bouts that we saw. And I recorded a lot of them because uh, I wanted to actually, not just for the purpose of these videos, but I kind of want to go back and watch like how, what, what was the most common way people got that point? How did they defend yeah. themselves and, and manage to get the score at the same time? Um, so yeah, it was, it was incredibly, incredibly interesting to watch. Um, and it was very exciting, and of course, it's the largest bracket, it's the biggest draw, so it's the biggest tournament. So it took a while to, to, to go through all the uh, participants. I think it was three hours for the initial bouts, and then they had um, a second two-hour thing to go through the semifinals, and then the finals themselves were to determine the first, second, third, and fourth place uh, pr um, participants. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was really awesome, and, and I think that Long Point being the biggest, as it were, the, the most predominant tournament. Um, really, I mean, you, you're not going to see much better right now in the U.S. 
uh, happening in terms of the scale as well as the skill. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think if there's any one thing that would definitely be a big draw for anyone interested in HEMA, um, I would encourage you look into Long Point uh, because the tournament scene there as well as everything else we've talked about uh, throughout all of these videos, um, I can't think of a thing that makes me more excited to be participating in HEMA and I can't think of a thing that makes me more excited to continue participating in it. Uh, and I honestly, right, right now I know I want to do this next year. Um, it was just that incredible. The entire experience was that much fun and was so awesome that I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to sign up for next year. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be waiting. Be waiting for those registrations to open. So I'm ready to go. Well and it sounds like next year is gonna be a really good year to jump in anyone who hasn't ever been there before. They're gonna be moving to a new venue next year, which is going to make it twice the size of what it was easily. Sounds like yeah. Uh, so this year I think they topped out <clears throat> There were 250 people attending. What was the total number of people who competed in the long story? I think I think they said it was like between 70 and 80 or something. 70 and 80. And it was oh, I thought a it was lot. up to 90. It might have but been. so they they said that they believe next year they'll be able to accommodate what like two 150 200. Yeah, so like almost um, doubling the size of just the tournament itself as yeah, well as the overall. Because they're going to uh, be able to have it. more ring space, so they'll be able to have more pools going simultaneously. Yeah. So it'll be a good time to jump in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope this was valuable for people who are just you know have never been able to participate in something like this. You get a little bit of insight into what it's like, and I would encourage everyone uh, who has an interest in HEMA to find at least one time to go to something like this, even if it's not Long Point. There are plenty of other tournaments out there. Um, go find time to go participate in this and get to know people outside of your club and get to bump elbows with, again, the heavy hitters. It's amazing the people that we saw there in terms of, you know, big names, the, the, the all-stars of HEMA. There are a lot of them there. Um, and you get a chance to talk to them and realize, hey, they're really cool, normal people. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just one of those things. Go out there. Go, go latch on the opportunity. It's worth every cent of the travel time, of the ticket price to actually mm -hmm. get in. Um, and I would highly encourage people to look into it for the next year. And anyone who is interested in doing that, they said registration for next year is going to open in the final quarter of this year. So this yep. winter you'll be able to go do that. Yeah, so definitely check it out. Uh, hopefully, again, this has been valuable, and I hope you enjoyed watching these videos. Uh, so I guess we'll this channel will go back to its kind of normally scheduled reviews <laughs> after this. So uh, thank you for watching. Bye.